Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's lecture, we're going to continue taking a look at the different reactions that alkenes can undergo by looking at the addition of carbenes to alkenes, which is going to end up giving us a three membered ring as the final product, so a cyclopropane. We're going to take a look at this reaction and all of its details coming up on the channel right now. So thank you so much for joining me today. Please remember to head on over to chemcomplete.com for all your learning needs and resources, and we will get started with the reaction of carbenes with alkenes. So what is a carbene? A carbene is a neutral carbon with six valence electrons, and two of those are going to create a divalent pair. So what you are going to have here is you will have a carbon now that carbon will usually have two other groups, so R could be anything here, it's just standing for rest of the molecule. And you'll notice when we put R prime, the little dash there, the prime marker, just means that these two could be separate from one another. They don't have to be identical, although sometimes they will be. And we would have a pair of electrons up here on this carbon. So this right here is a carbene. Now. Carbenes must be prepared during the reaction itself because they are highly reactive in nature, right? The six valence electrons and the pair there is not a normal state for carbon. It's very much a Lewis acid that is looking for electrons to be donated, which is where the alkene is going to come in in a minute here. But carbenes need to be prepared during the reaction itself due to how reactive they are. And so when we take a look at that, we are going to have to prepare them previously to their reaction with the alkene. So we'll take a look at that in one second. But what we would have here is we've got the carbene, which is going to be the carbon with the pair and the two different R groups. And then that will be plus an alkene. So the alkene is just going to be a generic alkene right here. We don't really care what these groups are that are coming off of it at the moment. And what we're going to end up with when we do this reaction is that the pi bond will react with the carbene and the lone pair will react back. So we will get a three membered carbon ring, right, with whatever R and R prime are up here. So I've got R and R prime, right, and then we would still have whatever was kind of initially on the front and the back of each of those carbons prior to the reaction would still be there. And that would be the product. So you would get a cyclopropane of sorts, and uh, it could be just cyclopropane if we have two hydrogens there. Uh, those could be halogens, which we're going to see in a minute, right? Or they could be some other sort of group. But one of the things we have to consider is how we're going to be able to prepare carbenes, because that can start to limit what methods we have or what type of carbenes we can actually prepare in order to do this. So carbenes can usually be prepared by two different methods. The first one that's very well known is the exposure of chloroform, which is CHCl3, to a strong base, and potassium hydroxide is a typical one that is often shown in texts. So if we take a look at this, we have chloroform. Now the chloroform would be a regular tetrahedral type structure. So we've got the chlorines, we're going to have a hydrogen, only one though, and then we would have the additional chlorines here and here, right? So here's chloroform, and the hydroxide, the presence of the hydroxide is going to initiate this reaction. So if you put chloroform in with a strong base, one of the pairs from that base will go ahead and will take this hydrogen, this proton right here, and the electrons will go to the carbon. Now in that process, you're going to create a pair and the pair will be left with a carbon here. We've got the chlorine here, right? The pair that's on the carbon now. And then we still have these other two chlorines here. Now, if you go back and you look at the carbene, the carbene has two groups, not three groups on it, right? So one of these chlorines is going to leave after this process has occurred. And then what we are left with is the chlorinated carbene. So we've got Cl, we've got the carbon in the middle with the pair, 
and then we've got another CL down here. So this is a very common method of creating carbenes in order to get those three membered rings if they are desired. Now the second way that we can go about doing this is something called the Simmons-Smith reaction. And in this reaction, it's going to be a little bit different than what we saw above. This is going to use diiodomethane, so it'll be a CH2 that's going to have two iodines on it. And that's going to be treated with a zinc-copper alloy, and the result will be iodomethyl zinc iodide. And this is typically formed in ether. Uh, that is the solvent of choice when we end up doing this. So what you end up with when you uh, kind of mix this material together, you get the iodine, you have the CH2, and then you get right in between here the zinc and the iodine. Okay. Now there are other organometallic reactions that operate under a certain similar premise. Uh, you know, namely the Grignard reaction is one that's very well known for this, where you could take an alkyl halide and upon exposure to magnesium, the magnesium can kind of uh, work its way in between the halogen and the uh, R group, whatever the alkyl group is, to give you your Grignard reagent. So if you've been exposed to or you've seen Grignard reagents, this is kind of similar in terms of its preparation. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this has a different term this right here is known as a carbonoid okay e n o i d and these behave very very similar to a carbene so these are the equivalent to or are essentially a ch2 with the pair on it all right so when you use this in an actual reaction with an alkene this is going to add CH2 to the ring, okay, and that is going to form cyclopropane. And this would just be pure cyclopropane, right, at that junction because it's just H groups. We don't have anything else there. There's no chloros or anything like that. All right, so to give you just an example here before we start talking about a look at some of the observed results, let's say that I have. Uh, we'll do a six-membered ring, okay? And then I've got the alkene running along the side here. So if I expose this alkene to chloroform and the base, it will make the carbene, and then it will subsequently react with the alkene because the carbenes are so reactive, they're not going to stay around long. That's why we create them fresh due to their reactivity in the solution. And what we're going to end up with here, right, is going to be the carbon here. And then we would have, right, a chlorine. We would have a chlorine. And then you would still have whatever's left over here so there were some implied hydrogens at these sites right and that would be your result for the chloroform method now what happens if we go and use the simmons smith reaction well i'll show that on the other side here if we're going on this side right you would use the <clears throat> zinc copper alloy in ether so you would have zinc and then you can usually in parentheses to show the other metal copper alloy and that's going to be in an ether solvent right and then we also need along with that the ch2i2 so if i do that that will just give me the ch2 group or the cyclopropane add-on and so here i would have simply a ch2 group up here Right, and then I would still have again the hydrogens here. All right, now in terms of the observed results, what are we going to expect here? The reaction occurs in a single mechanistic step, meaning that it's all going to happen at once, once the carbene or the carbonoid has been formed. And that, when we ever have, whenever we have one step like that, is going to preserve the stereochemistry in these types of reactions. Uh, for cis and for trans. So if something started off as cis, 
then it will maintain that type of stereochemistry around the ring. And then if it started off as trans, it would also maintain that around the ring. So because of this, let's take a look at a brief example here. Let's say that I've got, uh, we'll do an example where there's a cis uh, alkene. All right, so down here we'll have an ethyl group. So we've got a CH3, CH2 group. And then we'll do the double bond, the carbon. And let's just do a methyl on this side. And okay, now you see they're on the same side, so they're cis as far as stereochemistry is concerned, right? And then here is the hydrogen back here. So if I, let's say, use the chloroform method on this, so I use the CHCl3 and the KOH method, what I'm going to end up with, if I take a look at this, is the preserved stereochemistry around this carbon three-membered ring. So what do I mean by that? I mean the hydrogens will stay behind and then these groups will be coming out front. These groups being the R groups or the larger uh, methyl and ethyl groups. Okay, so you're going to see this. Now, let's say that instead of the hydrogen on the right-hand side being in the back, it was the methyl, then you would see the same thing. The methyl would be back here and the ethyl would be up front and you would get a trans type of stereochemistry with the ring. And then we don't want to forget we also still have our two chlorines because we used the chloroform reaction for that one. Okay, so if you take cis 2 pentane, or excuse me, pentene, and then you expose it to uh, the chloroform method, you will still have cis as the stereochemistry at the end. All right, now the mechanism to wrap this up, this really isn't going to take too long because, like I said, it's a single step concerted mechanism here. You get an alkene. And when you have the alkene, you're going to expose it to the carbene. Now, again, remember, the reagents may look different over the arrow that we're talking about because we have to make this carbene fresh in solution, depending on which method we're going with, right? But here's the general form of what we're going to be adding here. And we'll add the prime just to differentiate that one. So what's going to happen? Well, the pair will go to the more substituted carbon to form a bond. And then the pi electrons will go and reach out to the carbene so we can form a bond with the less substituted carbon. And that's all you really need for this. So once you've done that and you have this here, you're going to end up with your carbene, right? Whatever R prime is. We've seen examples where it could be hydrogen or where it could be chloro, right? And then you would still have whatever the H here is and the H here. All right, so that's a look at the mechanism. Very, very simple compared to some of the other mechanisms we've been looking at for alkenes. So that is it for this particular discussion on carbenes and carbene chemistry with alkenes. Again, remember to head on over to chemcomplete.com. Lots of free resources to help you with your studies throughout the semesters, whether you're in high school or college, or you're just learning on your own. And we also have very affordable guides for sale over there, especially spectroscopy, gas chromatography, some of the things that people are more confused about, uh, some of the more complicated subjects. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching with Chem Complete, because I know there's a lot of options out there. Drop a like, comment, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, if you say subscribed, you'll be up to date whenever new content is released. I will see everybody in the next one. Take care.